Well, it isn't everybody that has a revolving shed in their back garden. But this isn't just an ordinary revolving shed. It's an observatory, and it was built by Reg Spry, the astronomer. Mm -hmm. that right, well, Reg? That's right, yeah. Well, I'm very lucky in having a nice garden with a clear view of the sky at night in all directions, practically. And it's nice to have a, a good telescope. And it's more very convenient to have one that is permanently housed so that I can just walk out into the garden and start viewing straight away without having to a lot of assembling. The observatory was my own idea of construction. I got the local blacksmith to get the steel ring track for it to run around on. There was an old shed laying over there near the garage that had seen a lot better days. So I, with a few pieces of new timber, I got a good, strong foundation and frame. And the rest of the shed were formed of my thing. And with the door opening like that and the roof opening like that, I have a full view of every part of the sky. All sorts of pieces are, are involved in it. These rings were part of a brake drum of a lorry that I cut off with a hacksaw. The motor is an old gramophone motor. Uh, now, was this the first telescope you made? No, no. The first one I made is the one I've got out on the lawn there. Oh yes, yes. yes. No, this is the, this is the, this is the aftermath of lots of other little bits of pieces of work. Can we go and look at that? Yes, beyond me. It's just around the corner there. Fine. This is the first telescope I made. The mirrors were made professionally. I don't play about making mirrors, it's too difficult. But here you've got a couple of shelves out of the larder, a half shaft from a car. Originally I had a piece of a car jack there. The, the half shaft of a car is very nice because well, it's got two nice bolts here to put everything on. The, the viewfinder, which of course is really a baby telescope, a refracting telescope, uh, that was made from the optics taken from an old pair of binoculars that had seen better days. That is a piece of um, loo plumbing. These are the tops of some coffee tops, uh, uh, coffee jars. Uh, these are just ordinary old nuts and bolts, you see, that just there. Uh, these are the adjusting screws to put it into position if necessary. Here, you, everybody's eyesight is different, so you have this so that you can focus on what you're looking at. On my other telescope, I have a very nice, what we call a Crayford eyepiece mounting. But for somebody who, who hasn't got all the facilities of that, you just mock it up at a Meccano, as I did. Um, this part was added afterwards, part of the mechanism that I once, for a um, concrete mixer I made, but still it does that. You see, by twisting it round, it gives me the slow motion that's necessary. These two tall bolts are just so that I can easily undo them for transportation. It all goes in the boot of the car when I want to go anywhere. These just odd bits of timber that happen to be floating around. Um, the Just anything to hold it air, anything to hold it. It doesn't have to be enclosed. See, this flap covers the mirror. And then and the, in here there's another little mirror that, that sends the view through here. You need a lot of complicated tools to put this together, I suppose. Oh, no. Just oh. four tools I'll use for that, which I'll show you upstairs presently. Oh, cool. yes. yes. Well, here we are in my workshop, which is indoors. Luckily, it's nice and dry. And as I said in the garden, uh, that telescope was made with a simplicity of tools so that any sort of young lad could make one, and he hasn't got to have a great outlay of tools to do it with. Uh, a, a pad saw or keyhole saw that will go around doing all these circular parts. The ordinary common or garden tenon saw. If you've got a big hand saw, it doesn't matter as long as it's to cut the wood. A screwdriver and a wheel brace and plenty of drills. I used quite a number of drills on it. But those were the only four tools that I used to make that sort of thing. Because with a telescope, if it works, good. The appearance is not an essential, but if it looks nice, so much the, the, the better. Uh, because people who come to my workshop will often say to me, well, how long does it take to make a telescope? Well, being in a rather jocular mood one day, I said, well, how long does it take me to make a telescope? Well, I said, well, look, if I go like this, I have made a telescope. How long did that take me? <laughs> which, is the, which is what a, a refracting telescope is, a lens with an eyepiece. That's all there is to a telescope. The brass two milli keeps it from A to B, the distance. But you've been doing this sort of thing all your life, have you? No, I started life as a photographer. Father was a photographer. And uh, then, in later years, I 
well, sort of retired and bought a little general stores here in Selsey. And that, I uh, re retired actually in 1971 when I closed it in an Easter that year. So you hadn't started until you were what age? Oh, astronomy, or yes. I suppose I was 66 or so is when I did that. But of course, I've always liked to make things. I've always had a workshop to amuse myself with. Now, for somebody who couldn't get out of the house, supposing they had rheumatism or something, found it difficult to walk, would you say that astronomy was possible for them? Oh, yes. Of course, it is best to get out in the open, but if you come into the other room, I've got some telescopes there that I've borrowed from a friend of mine to show that it can be done by the housebound. Well, here are two small telescopes that I have borrowed from friends. A small refractor belonged to a nephew of mine, so quite easily. Absolutely no weight in it. A four and a half inch reflector belongs to a, a very dedicated astronomer friend of mine. He does a lot of wonderful work with this. And as you see, I'm indoors looking at the door on my balcony. So, that, and you see, that is how I was looking last night at the Jupiter and other stars, so there was no trouble sort of thing. But of course, you can start with binoculars, because you don't have to have very expensive ones, and you can do a lot of good work with binoculars. You can also use your eyes, because there are plenty of books around naked eye astronomy, uh, or astronomy through binoculars. You can always get those at your library, or they'll get them for you. And um, What do you think is the best thing for a beginner to look at? Richard? Well, why not the moon? Yeah. It comes round regularly once a month and every night if it isn't cloudy you can see the moon at some time or other. And I have a map here I think that uh, to give you some idea. Now here is a map of the moon because the full moon is not a good time to look at the moon because you have no shadows. But when you start with a new moon and then every night there's a little bit more of it comes along and it is the sun shining on the moon that gives you the shadows the shadows show you the craters and the mountains and some of the mountains the Apennine mountains are some of them are taller than Everest and some of the craters are I believe up to 150 miles across so and each night as you as the earth moves around so the we're in a different position and you get different shadows and even what you saw on the, the first day of the new moon this month is different to what you see on the first day of the new moon next year because it, they are slightly in different positions. So there is always something different. Thank you, Reg. Mm. Reg Spry, astronomer extraordinaire.